Our gospel lesson comes to us today from the ninth chapter of John. It's the whole chapter. And I am reading today from the New International Version. So it won't precisely match what's in your pew Bible. As Jesus went along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned? this man or his parents, that he was born blind. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, said Jesus, but this happened so that the work of God might be displayed in his life. As long as it is day, we must do the work of him who sent me. Night is coming, when no one can work. While I am in the world, I am the light of the world. Having said this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and put it on the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This word means scent. So the man went and washed and came home seeing. His neighbors and those who had formerly seen him begging asked, Isn't this the man who used to sit and beg? Some claimed that it was he. Others said, no, he only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am the man. How then were your eyes opened, they demanded. He replied, the man they called Jesus made some mud and put it on my eyes. He told me to go to Siloam and wash. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. I do not know, he said. They brought him to the Pharisees, the man who had been born blind. Now the day on which Jesus had made the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Therefore the Pharisees also asked him how he had received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man replied, and I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others asked, How can a sinner do such miraculous signs? So they were divided. Finally, they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, he is a prophet. The Jews still did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked, is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that he can now see? We know he's our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can now see or who opened his eyes, we don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jews. For already the Jews had decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the Christ would be put out of the synagogue. That was why his parents said, He is of age. Ask him. A second time they summoned the man who had been blind. Give glory to God, they said. We know this man is a sinner. He replied, Whether he is a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I do know, I was blind, now I see. Then they asked him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered, I have told you already, and you did not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you want to become his disciples too? Then they hurled insults at him and said, You are this fellow's disciple. We are disciples of Moses. We know that God spoke to Moses, but as as for this fellow, we don't even know where he comes from. The man answered, Now that is remarkable. You don't know where he comes from. Yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners. God listens to the godly man who does his will. Nobody has ever heard of opening the eyes of a man born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. To this they replied, you were steeped in sin at birth. How dare you lecture us? And they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out, and when he found them, He said, do you believe in the Son of Man? Who is he, sir? 
the man asked him. Tell me so that I may believe in him. Jesus said, you have now, you have now seen him. In fact, he is the one speaking with you. Then the man said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, for judgment, I have come into the world so that the blind will see and those who see will be blind. Some Pharisees who were with him heard him and said, what, are we blind too? Jesus said, if you were blind, you would not be guilty of sin. But now that you claim you can see, your guilt remains. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. There is a new advertising campaign for the New York Times, and it is all about truth. It comes in black and white only. And it starts with, the truth is, on the screen, followed by a statement that says, more important than ever. And then there is, with ever-increasing speed, subjective statements about the truth. I know they're subjective because one of them says, the truth is a woman should dress like a woman, which in 2017, I know we could argue about that one for days, right? <laughs> but at the end of the advertisement, there are some commonly held beliefs about truth. It says the truth is hard to know, to find. The truth is more important than ever. I don't think the truth is subjective. What we do about the truth, that can be subjective, right? So, for example, the truth is the water crisis in Flint, Michigan is still happening. Three years later, citizens in a country that likes to call itself the greatest nation in the world do not have access to safe and clean drinking water. That's the truth. Now, we could debate all day about what to do about it, how to fix it, and who's to blame. Drawing conclusions is subjective, but the truth is just the truth. The Pharisees learn one more thing about the truth today. It is uncontrollable. This story of Jesus healing the man born blind spreads like wildfire throughout their community, and the Pharisees don't like it. The truth is, they are in a tough spot, caught somewhere between the occupying army of Rome and the people they're supposed to be leading. People with no choice, no change, and no chance. The Pharisees are in a tough spot. And the truth is, they have shifted from serving their people to wielding power for power's sake. They don't really care if the blind man can see. They don't care whether, what health care program he is on so long as they get to control it. So long as that healing didn't happen on a Sabbath, so long as there isn't a grassroots uprising behind that Jesus fellow, so long as they can mete out both the punishments and perks as they see fit, so long as they remain in control. The blind staying blind is just collateral damage so long as that power structure remains undisturbed. Wielding power for power's sake is bound to compromise your core beliefs. These are people who claim to be disciples of Moses, who know God's law to love, to welcome the foreigner, to serve others, to basically work on behalf of those with no chance, no change, and no choice. But they're more concerned about conserving their own power. And it's a problem. I don't know about you, but I have seen this happen. It is a fine line, a really almost imperceptible tipping point when you stop serving God's power and start claiming it for your own. And I've seen congregations do it. I've seen congregations start out with the fire to build the kingdom of God. And after some time, their building becomes an idol to them. And after more time... They become just desperate to keep the building open. 
I know you've heard those stories, right? Yes, when you start serving power, you will compromise your core beliefs. So it's no wonder then that the Pharisees will not take the truth for an answer. They don't like it. But as we've already talked about, the truth is just the truth. And our youngest member here today knows that. Right? I don't like my bedtime, but it's still my bedtime. The truth is I have to go to bed. Right, kids? Do you love your bedtime, my children? No. Nope. It's still bedtime. That's the truth. Just because you don't like it doesn't make it false. What you do about it is subjective. But the truth is the truth. And the Pharisees don't like it at all. They reject God's power. They basically decide to say that God has office hours and does not work on the Sabbath, period. Sorry, only by appointment and not even then. They put limits on what God can do and when God can do it. This is why Jesus says that they are blind. Because they are stubborn and sinful. Instead of rejoicing in this miraculous healing, instead of praising God, they are busy to say, not you. That's not really God. They hear the truth. They hear the argument within the bounds that they have already set. The man says, if only people from God can heal and I am healed, Jesus is from God. It's a logical argument, right? They won't have it. This is why they are blind. They are blind to the power of God. The truth is, sin is being blind to the power of God at work in other people's lives. That's a phrase from Jesus at the beginning of this gospel. Gospel. The truth is, sin seeks to limit God's love to everyone, everywhere. The truth is, sin seeks to separate and shame those who are different so that the powerful remain in power. Think of slavery, separated and shamed so the powerful stay in power. Restrictions on voting rights for women and African Americans. The powerful get to stay in power. And now we get to argue about marriage equality and gender identity and how long my family's been in the country versus your family and what an American looks like. Also that there is no shift in power. And if we aren't acknowledging that we have power, we are blind. But the truth is, the God's honest truth is, despite that sin, God loves you. God's power will not be limited by us or by anything else in all of creation. It is not happening. That's not how it works. God's love is for everyone, everywhere. The Bible shows us again and again God seeks out those with no choice, no change, and no chance. God works for their healing, their wholeness, for their peace. Last week, Jesus sought out the woman at the well. This week, Jesus seeks out the man born blind. And every day, I promise you, God is seeking out you. The truth is you are beloved. The truth is there is no sin so great that God will take that love from you. The truth is God loves this whole world so much that he sent his only son. There is no limit on this great power. What joy and relief that should give us. 
May we walk out of this place today shining the light of the truth into this world. The truth that we can't argue with. The truth that shares love, that gives more chances, that offers forgiveness. The truth of Jesus Christ. Amen.